Hello, welcome to the security updates with me, Hamza Dabjari. In this program, we will be covering for you the latest stories that matter security in the African countries from West to Horn of Africa ahead on the program. Somaliland and Puntland discuss it to lower interclan tensions in its own region. Suspected Al Shabaab attack on Lamu Kenya leaves six people, five under investigation for the death of a Somali man in Malta. Plus, Buhari says Nigeria will remain resolute despite insecurity. Welcome to the program. Somaliland and Somalia's Puntland state have discussed it to disclose an inter-clan conflict that erupted in Seoul region. Both administrations did not confirm the scale of the consequences, but urged the two warring sides to immediately stop conflict. The Interior Minister of Somaliland, Mohamed Kahin, said he spoke with the Internal Security Minister of Somalia's Butlan State on issues concerning an inter-clan conflict erupted in Seoul region. Mr. Kahin affirmed that Somaliland won't tolerate any further inter-clan conflicts in this territory. He denounced that his government has any involvement in these recurrent inter-clan conflicts in the region, but he believes that there are other foreign interventions in Seoul, though the minister declined to disclose their names. Mohamed Kahin asked Somalia's Butlan state to work with Somaliland of escalating the tension. For the past years, there have been recurrent interclan conflicts in poor Ame of Seoul region, which claimed the lives of many people. Both administrations did not confirm the scale of the consequences, but urged the two warring sides to immediately stop conflict. In the past years, the Somaliland government spent efforts to lower the tension, but still the situation seems unresolved. At least six people were Monday morning killed following an attack by Al-Shabaab militants in Wudu Machempeni area in Lamu County. Lamu County Commissioner Irungu Masharia confirmed the incident, saying an operation to get the attackers was ongoing. Lamu County Commissioner Irungu Macharia confirmed the incident, saying an operation to get the attackers was ongoing. The attack was said to be anticipated by security agencies who said the gang had been sighted in the larger Boni forest and was on the move. Tension remained high in the area amid fears of more attacks as security operations were mounted. Witnesses said the attackers used a post modus operandi to spread fears among locals. It came two days after a border border rider was on New Year killed after his motorcycle ran over a bomb that was set on the road in Kiangu, Lamo County. Officials who attended the scene said the improvised explosive device had been set by Ashbab sighted in the area. The rider was faring cut to the near kenya Somali border when his motorcycle was hit. He died on the spot, police said. Bomb experts said the explosive used in an attack was made using a different technology. The attack prompted an operation in the area with several motor agency teams been deployed in Liboy area along the main border, the team stumbled on a fresh site that had been abandoned by escaping group. The site had full stuffs and uniforms, indicating the gang of about 50 had been there for a while. There are fears they are planning an attack on security agencies and civilians. This has prompted operations spanning from Mandera, Wajir, Lamu and part of Kilefi countries. Inspector General of Police Hilari Mutembai said they need public support even as the operation goes on. The area is near the Kenya-Somalia border which has been under attack by Ashabab in the past. Al Arabia Television and this Al Hadath News Channel on Thursday were raided by Sudanese security forces in Khartoum and confiscated their women, resulting in killing four civilians. On Thursday, the repression by the authorities reached a new level. First, the security forces cut off mobile internet, all telephone communications including calls from abroad and the bridges linking Khartoum to its suburbs Amdorman and Khartoum North. In the streets of the capital and its outskirts, security forces fired tear gas and live ammunition at tens of thousands of supporters of civilian rule in a country that has been under military rule for most of its 65 years of independence. At the same time, officers arrested journalists and attacked the office of the Arab satellite channel Al Arabia. After two months of a crackdown that has left a total of 53 people dead, 
the violence on Thursday was concentrated in Omdurman, where four protesters were fatally shot in the head or chest, according to a pro-democracy doctor's union. A fifth died on Friday after being shot on Thursday in central Khartoum. Somalia Internal Security Minister Abdullahi Sheikh Noor orders intelligence agents to be removed from Mogadishu's airport police to take sole responsibility effective January 2nd. National Intelligence Security Agency Acting Director Yasin Ferry was instructed to transfer all responsibilities currently held by NISA to the police. Somalia Internal Security Minister Abdullahi Sheikh Noor has directed all plain it close spy agents at Aden at the International Airport to vacate the facility. In a letter addressed to National Intelligence and Security Agency, Acting Chief Yasin Farai was directed to remove NISA officials from the airport. The minister ordered NISA officials to transfer the responsibility to the police officers at the airport. According to the letter, the complaints against the spy agents had been increasing in recent months. The deployment comes barely days after the two top leaders of the country clashed over delays on the ongoing elections and the prime minister insisted to lead the responsibilities of the election despite from archer calling him a failure and the country needs another alternative person to take the lead the international community called somalia's leaders to display tensions and put the country's interest first a strikes by the nigerian armed forces have killed top leaders of the pants terrorizing the northwest region of the country of the military face off but we will be back after the short break Making documentaries is one of the most creative craft and challenging endeavors you can be involved in. It is an effective strategy to inform, persuade, educate, defend perspective and shed light on various issues, policies and activities. At CBA TV, Documentary production is our forte. We capture every TikTok detail of events in highest resolution to tell the story you care about, from politics to human hunger, research-based content, educative and informative. We also help you project your story in a dynamic perspective that attracts the world views of the target audience as there is no better or more powerful way to place the organization's values and achievements than to make an excellent documentary film. No doubt, our strength lies in these ventures and we pride in many award-winning documentaries which have been earning accolades across Africa and beyond. Let's tell your story. Welcome back again. Uh, strikes by the Nigerian Armed Forces have killed top leaders of the Pandas terrorizing in the northwest region part of the country of the military face off. The uh, strikes killed two of the most wanted Pandit leaders. Air strikes by the Nigerian Armed Forces have killed top leaders of the bandit terrorizing the northwest region of the country after a military face off. The airstrike killed two of the most wanted bandit leaders, Al Haji Auta and Kachala Ruga, in a forest in Samfara State, northern Nigeria. The notorious bandit commanders were killed after a Nigerian Air Force aircraft under Operation Adarindaji acted on credible intelligence and bombarded their enclaves in Magaji local government area of the state in the early hours of New Year. The sustained attacks by the Nigerian Air Force also claimed the lives of many of his gang around his camp and adjoining areas. Samfara and other states in the northwest and north central region of Nigeria, especially Katsina, Sakoto, Kaduna, Kebi, and Niger State, have been experiencing attacks by bandits who kidnapped for ransom and sometimes kill their victims. The bandits invaded some schools in the state and adopted the students, some of whom have been released after ransom was reportedly paid while others remain in their captivity. 
the Nigerian military said the armed forces continue to make progress against the bandit and other non-state actors posing threat to the peaceful coexistence of Nigeria. The police are investigating at least five people in connection with an accident at Marsa factory that caused a Somali man his life. The investigation is revolves around the death of Ahmed Adawadiri, a 39-year-old Somali who fell a height of one and a half stories and succumbed to his injuries in hospital. The investigation revolves around the death of Ahmed Atawid Riye, a 39-year-old Somali who fell a height of one and a half stories and succumbed to his injuries in hospital. The Riye was initially reported missing by the police on Monday afternoon, who said that he had last been seen a week earlier. Sources close to the investigation said two men were arrested and interrogated over the accident while the police spoke to another three under caution which means they are being treated as suspect. However, a few hours later, the police said it had resorted that a missing person was an unidentified worker who had suffered a fall at a Marsa factory on December 22nd. It was gathered that Deriye had been installing air conditioning units and solar panels at the factory at the time of the fall. It seems that the man did not have a fixed job and is believed to have been hired specifically for the task in question. Media reported that Deria received medical attention at the scene of the accident. Paramedics on site administered life-saving procedures. However, he died later in hospital. The victim had been living in Malta for four years. Inspectors from the Occupational Health and Safety Authority are conducting a separate investigation in connection with the accident to establish whether the proper safety protocols had been properly followed. A magisterial inquiry is also on the way, led by Magistrate Leonard Karana and a number of experts and police officers are assisting. According to a report, it was nurses at Mata Dei Hospital who identified the Somali man. The nurses had originally been referring to him as Mr. X, the name given to unidentified persons and cadavers. They eventually identified him from a photo disseminated by the police. While Somalia is in political crisis and security threats, the National Intelligence and Security Agency has launched a security operation against Al Shabaab fighters to secure a normalcy of the region. Somalia's National Intelligence and Security Agency launched operations against Al Shabaab fighters in the Gila region. Officially said the main target was Belad Hawa and its surroundings. They said the security operation is related to the efforts of the government to remove Al Shabaab fighters from the district. Security officials could be seen at Belad Hawa, which hosts a large number of people. The security forces pledged to intensify the operations to prevent future attacks from Al Shabaab, which declared its position to destabilize the election process. The security forces did not say if they apprehended Al Shabaab suspects during the exile. For the past few days, there have been military operations in some parts of the country intended to remove Al Shabaab fighters from the remaining areas, though the group still remains functional and carries its operations against the government forces. President Mohamed Buhari said his administration will remain resolute to continue with program and plans despite the persistent insecurity in certain parts of the country. President Mohamedou Buhari said his administration will remain resolute to continue with programs and plans despite the persistent insecurity in certain parts of the country. The president said this in his New Year statement to the nation on January 1, 2022. The Nigerian leader said it was on record that his administration had invested heavily in recouping the military in line with upgrading the platforms and firepower required to tackle the current challenges being faced in the country. He said this was a follow-up to the promise to re-energize and reorganize the security apparatus and personnel of the armed forces and the police in the country. And not only are we here, we are standing tall in the Committee of Nations as one country united under the will of God and also actively growing that indivisible Nigerian Cypriots that has enabled us year after year, decade after decade, to weather all stormy waters and emerge stronger and better where others have fallen and disintegrated. 
this nation, this Nigeria, will survive and thrive. In this journey to nationhood, we have experienced the highs and the lows. Buhari said despite the challenges faced in 2021, it was also a year in which the administration executed successively key infrastructural projects, programs and initiatives to fulfill the promises made under the Security, Economy, Anti-Corruption Agenda, SEA. This government is committed to fulfilling the five demands of our youth, fully understanding that we all wish well for Nigeria. In the midst of all these challenges, I had initially pledged that as your elected president and commander-in-chief, I would ensure that these ongoing challenges will be faced head-on with renewed determination and with all the appropriateness and urgency required. On the economy, Buhari said Nigeria had learned its lessons and also keep learning from the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic to intensify effort to mitigate its socio-economic effect on the nation. Going forward in 2022, Buhari said his administration would intentionally leverage ICT platforms to create jobs while ensuring that the diversification of the economy created more support to other emerging sectors. He appealed to Nigerians to hope and envision a year of continued progress against combined challenges arising from security and socio-economic issues. And with that story of the President Muhammadu Buhari said his administration will remain resolute to the continue with program and plans despite the persistent insecurity in certain parts of the country. We'll wrap up our program for this time. Thank you very much for being with us. This is Miham Sadabjari. Adaba haot kacharasa.